Cornelia, a te la parola. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thank you uh, for the invitation in this members meeting of Transform Italy. I'm very happy that I can speak to you directly and uh, I'm very happy that Eva will translate me in a better, better Italian as I can speak in English. So use the possibility and hearing the translation words. I will show you my presentation. It's a an, an PowerPoint presentation. And I think it's good to have it for you because so I can show you uh, something, uh, what is going on in Italian in these times in front of the European elections. Let me start with the uh, crisis, organic crisis of the neoliberal uh, financial current uh, financial market system and the current strategy and conflict lines. As we are speaking since more or less 2008, 2009, about the organic crisis of the financial market system. And we speak about different phases. And the first phases was the crisis in 2008, 2009, the second in 2011 and 21. And we can say more or less connected with the Ukraine war, but not only, that we are in the new phases and that means the consolidation of the new project and with a deep conflict line between fossil and post-fossil conflict. That means we have different uh, power relations and power struggles in this uh, conflict system. That means the consolidation of the new right. The market liberal consolidation, that means the continuation of the austerity policy. And on the other hand, we see also the new kind of dealing, the Green Deal, a social liberal conflict, the solidarity left. And we can translate it in a kind of new quality of wars and struggles. We see the new quality of conflict between fossil and post-fossil energy and industry production, the question of aust austerity policy, but also the question concerning authoritarian democracy and new forms of neo-fascism. And we see also the conflict line between the progressive libertarian versus conservative authoritarian values also within the left. What is the starting point for the election in 2024? The European elections will take place in the time of war, climate change, social polarization, upheavals with the new forms and new view to the digitalization. We see on one hand the danger of authoritarian capitalism in the sense of the Putin regime, but also as a coming back of uh, Trump maybe. And on the other hand, also the neoliberal tendency and new forms of authoritarian neoliberalism, if you are thinking uh, concerning Macron and the protest against the uh, pension law. In the shadow of the uh, Ukraine war, we see the militarization of the European Union and the conflict between the ruling class is, is it is necessary to do this in alliance with the NATO or is the independent power as a stronger, a stronger oriented uh, to the European Union? And uh, connected with this question is the question of the EU autonomy. And what we see is uh, the reconstitution and the thinking about the reconstitution of the European Union as a global player. And that is connected with the question of the deeper integrated political and economical uh, actor as the European Union, or in confrontation to this orientation, the EU more or less as a single market with the transfer back to the competences to the member state. From the right wing point, we see Europe as a kind of sovereign fatherlands. We see some tendency concerning the uh, Green Deal, more or less against this Green Deal to phasing out the next generation a program. And of course, is it connected with the restrictive and militarized EU migration policy? And we see the militarization of the EU only in the interest, if it is only in the interest of the national uh, countries. 
So, what is going on on the political field? What I can see you, the first one is, what is going with the left? The left is a little bit weaker, but the main problem is that if you see behind the number, the founding parties of the European left party, of the European left, the Greeks, the Germans, the Italians, the French, the Spains, mostly of them, are splitted. And that has not only the consequences for the national level, that has also new consequences on the European level. We see continuation of the split also on the European level is going on. And when we see to the Greens, the Greens dominated by the German Greens, that means also, of course, they are supported the militarization of the European Union, and that will also have consequences on one hand concerning the militarization of the EU, but on the other hand, what does it mean to, to continue the policy concerning Green Deal? And we see the conservatives also dominated by the Germans. We see the, uh, the, uh, the Eurosceptical fraction, and that is dominated by Fratelli d'Italia. What does it mean? I think you know this better than me. And we see the identity and democracy fraction, the far right fraction, uh, dominated by the by Le Pen on France. And uh, the second strongest party is the AFD from Germany. That means your far right is going on. And I will show it you with this picture. If you see the tendency on the left hand side, it's a little bit goes down. A very decreasing is the Greens that is connected with the German Greens. But more important as this is the developing on the right hand side. That means the Eurosceptical parties and not so far from them, the far right really creasing. And that is really a problem. The dynamic in this moment is the dynamic on the left, uh, on the right hand side. And that is a danger. If you see this picture, the blue color means conservatives. The dark blue color means without that is Russia. It's not so important for my speech today. But the blue dark means this parties in this countries, the far right parties that dominated the ruling parties in the polls. That means leading in the polls from the far right is in Belgium, in France, Italy, in Netherlands, in Austria, in Hungary and Poland. And we see the government, uh, the far right in government in Italy, in Finland. It is supported in Sweden. And it was good that God Wilders was not able to build a minority government. But also we have a strong parties in Germany, in Bulgaria, in Portugal, last elections, 18% of the Sega in Spain. That means the dynamic is on the far right. What does it mean for the power relations on the European level? What you can see here is the only the great coalition is includes the liberals. The other both big parties are not able to build alone a coalition, but that is not new. That was more or less also the case in 2019. News is or new is that this great coalition with the Greens has no longer over 50%. And you see on the on and up as downstairs. That is a far right coalition, is a center far right coalition, uh, only member in the in the fraction of the three uh, fractions. That means the conservative, the uh, Eurosceptical, and the ID and democracy. But if you put to this top to this pillar also the independents and other parties, you came over fifty percent, and that means everything's what is going on in the direction of green policy include Green Deal, include some social Green Deal, whatever you want. It's, it has no longer the majority, but it will be a majority has a strengthening of nationalist tendency and against uh, the libertarian values in Europe. I'm going from the uh, political field to the social field. What you see is the Optimismo Scala that I... I'm using only for some sentence from my side. If you see the deep crisis of the, of the optimism, it was in 2008, 2009. Then you see the next one, it was in 2091 until 2001, 2001. That means the period of the pandemic. 
And then you see the next one, it was a war in the Ukraine and the high cost of living and so on. That means what you can see is, uh, is a feeling more and more, not only the individual crisis, it's a, a feeling of uncertainty between the people. The feeling nothing is safe, nothing is sure. Also that means a feeling uh, of uncertainty. What are the people thinking about what is most important uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2002 and 2003? What you see is in 2002, and that was from 2020 to 2002, the, on the high level, on the highest level came the social question. That means the high cost of living and the feeling and the fear against poverty and social exclusion. You see, between the end of 2003 and uh, 2004, 2000, uh, 2004 then, then you see the shift to the migration issues and the war in the Ukraine. That means also in, this, in the beginning of the year of 23, and that is also the case uh, in 24, you see at the first step is the migration question and the war in the Ukraine, that means also that is a consequence of the white populist discourses in the European Union. But it, the people see, and that is the relationship between what the people thinking has the European Union to do, and on the right hand side, what do you think is most important in your own country? And concerning this, both you see the differences. For Europe, and the first stage is the migration and Ukraine war, and the climate and the high cost of living is coming later, and also the climate change. But if you see what the people thinking in your own country, the high cost of living is on the top. And that means on the national level, the cost of living, the social question is on the top and we can use it. Since 2019, we see some changes concerning the view of the European Union that is not maybe so strong for you in Italy because you are always more pro-European pro as other countries. And that is connected in, to in, in the last time, of course, with the question of peace and security, but not only it is also connected with the question of cooperation between the member states with a kind of economic growth with uh, freedom of movement, of course, for people, especially in the peripheries of the European Union, and as uh, important to be more important member of the world. So, and uh, interesting is that new uh, view for the uh, European Union, also to interpret the European Union, the young generation, for the young generation is it very clear we have as a starting point in our own life, the European Union as it is. And my feeling is that a lot of, also especially the young generation, is not so critical against the European Union. More than 80% support the defense policy, the fair policy, the trade, uh, the, the trade fair policy, and also the um, foreign policy. Also they are, don't are so skeptical or so critical against the European Union. But one thing is really important. One third, one third of the uh, one quarter of the young generation, independent of the political orientation, are against Frontex, and that is the highest level of reservation against Frontex. That means this topic, Frontex and Frontex, and also the migration policy, is very important for the people. One thing is very problematic, the supporting of the foreign policy is also connected with supporting of the Ukraine measures, and that means uh, the humanitarian uh, measures support over 90%, but also over 60% to sending weapons and financialization of weapons. Uh, that is uh, this speech I give it you um, with my presentation, after my presentation. This speech, what Meloni is speaking in this moment, is not only the speech of Meloni. You can see more or less the same sentence in from represents of my own party, Die Linke. Also, that is stupid that I see. 
uh, what the people, what the far right is speaking today, I saw in the past as the positions of the left. No heavy weapons to the Ukraine, we as the left saying the same, and that is one of the challenges what we have. What is a good thing, as a good point, the majority supporting in the, in the European Union, the majorities of the people, the taxes for big transnational technology data companies, more or less 90% support the minimum wage in every country, more than 80%, and that is also important for trade, fair trade with social and ecological minimum Tony, standards. Please, could you go a little bit slowly? Okay. And we see, excuse me, uh, we see what is for the people in Europe very important, and that is the international situation. And you see, also, and that is for me important, the question of the climate change, because as you see, the left-wing voters, that is the red button, what you can see, this button is for the left voters, more important is as, as the waters as a whole. That means the climate question will be also next to the peace question and next to the migration question and the social question, of course, because the social question is always the head, the hurt of the, of the left. The climate question will be one of the most important questions also for the left. Let me go to my last point, because that is the most difficult point. Also, we have a lot of, also of pos possibilities to intervene in such a situation in which in we are staying. But we see the big fragmentation between the left in our families, in the party families in Europe, and also in our countries. And I give you the picture of uh, Luis Ramiro. He is a Spanish researcher, from, and he gives us this picture from 2002. What does it mean? The right wing is the social, social Democrats family. That means it's not so, it has not so big, big exceptions as the others one. It's very compact. You see the Greek. Green ones. The green ones are the greens in German, uh, in Europe. And the greens, that means that the greens uh, has a little bit more libertarian exceptions, but, oh, excuse me, but not so much. And then you see the black one. And the black one with the largest differences between authoritarian and libertarian value uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation. This is the challenge for the left, because concerning the social question, we are really united. You see us as the most left wings as a left wings position concerning the social question. That is not our problem, but the culture question and the differences between authoritarian and libertarian values that and the culture also connected with the political culture. That is the biggest problem of the left in Europe. And what we have to do is, we have to look for in which way is it possible to develop a, quest, a culture of solidarity between ourselves. The question of integrating the different positions and possibilities. And if I see what we can do, for example, in the European left, also in transform the possibility of bridge building in our own countries connected with the bridge building on the European field and of course in the global solidarity with the, with the left in everywhere. That is a challenge. But in Europe, of course, concerning the European elections, we have to concentrate what we can do directly for the people, for their daily life, and in how we can connect it on the national and also on the European level. That is a big challenge in what we are staying in. Many things. Excuse me for my fast words, for, for my fast speaking. Yeah, excuse me.
Pasqua. Grazie Conny, grazie anche a Eva che ci ha eh, reso possibile la traduzione simultanea.